Lord, we love you. You've been an awesome God. We love you. You woke us up this morning. We love you. You put food on our table. We love you. When everybody else turned their backs on us, you were right there. Lord, we love you. I'm thrilled and honored to be in God's house today and to be here at Community Worship Center where I now hold membership. Just be honest that I, I, I love all the pastors in and around the New York area. I have a lot of friends. We graduated from school together and we have maintained our, our friendship. But if I'm looking, searching for a pastor, a spiritual advisor, Somebody that I can call on is going to be Dr. Abraham Jules. Amen. And so I'm thrilled and honored to be here. And the worship has been awesome. I just thank God for the ministry of the praise team and the ministry of wonderful Latino choir. I look in the choir and I see my college roommate and I now know that the Latinos are working miracles I could you stand up brother Williams uh, when, when we were at school and amen and we had worship I, I always had to lead out in the songs and now he is in the choir one of the most sophisticated choirs amen I thank God because we prayed together we worked together I still have some of his secrets and I'm so glad to see my, my friend, Brother Barry. Amen. God is good. God is good. I want to thank God for Pastor Gar, who's been always very kind. I enjoy coming here just to hear good words about me. Uh, Pastor Gar, we praise God for you. You're a wonderful man of God. You're humble, you're kind, you're generous. Amen. And you're always willing and ready to listen when we call. Amen. So we praise God that we can come to this place of worship today. There is no place like this place. Anywhere near this place. So this must be the place. Amen. This is the place we thank God. For this place. And so today let's get to the word. Let's get to the word that comes to us from the book of Matthew chapter 17. Reading from verse 1 to verse 4. Matthew chapter 17. From 1 to verse 4. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Father God we honor you. We praise you. We, we lift you up. We, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your graciousness towards us. We thank you, Lord, that we have come today with our sins forgiven. And Lord, we have come with worship on our lips and praise in our hearts and thanksgiving on our mind because you are such a good God. Oh, Lord, this moment, your people are seated. They're all here ready for a blessing. And so, Lord, I pray that you will remove every distraction of humanity. Lord, speak through me that word that you have to encourage your people. Bless us today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. The word says, and after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his garment as white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here, if thou wilt. Let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody ought to turn to your neighbor and just say, it's good for us to be here. It's good. Just say, I don't know what you've been through this week, but it is good for us to be here. Amen. Thanks be to God. Most, if not all of us sitting up in church today can testify that despite life's puzzling and problematic predicaments, we have had good times. Amen. I've entitled my, this word today, Let the Good Times Roll. We can testify that we have had good times. Some of us, some of us right now may be coming up the rough side of the mountain. But the truth be told is that we've had some incredibly wonderful days. Life has not been all bad. And although we have had our fair share of distress and disappointments, we have also had some marvelous moments when we have experienced the bountiful blessings and the inexhaustible goodness straight from the hands of our wonderful God. God has been good. And in a real sense, we have been there when times were good. Good times, when you were on top of your game and felt like you could conquer the world. Good times when you were young and restless, just bubbling over with youthful vigor and enthusiasm. Good times when you were prospering and in good health, when your blood pressure reading was 120 over 70 and your glucose was 80, and you had all five senses, 20-20 vision, 32 teeth. Help me, Jesus. Good times. And ladies, your vitals were 36, 24, 36. We've been there in good times. Good times when we were completely mesmerized by the magnificent and the goodness and the graciousness of God. So much so that you did not want to leave the place of worship and anointing. Good times. Well, I'm not talking about the kind of worship where the saints were sedate and cerebral. No, I'm not talking about the kind of worship where they were too educated and sophisticated. No, I'm talking about the time when the Holy Ghost was visiting. When the worship was uplifting. When the saints were praying. When the songs were inspiring. And the testimonies were moving. And the preacher was preaching. I'm talking about the times when your adrenaline was pumping and you were going from crying to rejoicing. And at the end of the encounter, you didn't want to leave because you knew that you had a mountaintop 
experience and you were having a good Holy Ghost time. Well, Peter, James, and John were having a good time. They had one of those experiences. And the word says that Jesus took his three closest disciples up to the mountain to pray. Isn't it just like Jesus to take you to places that you have never been and give you a power that you have never had? And bless you like he has never blessed you before. And if you stay long enough, you will see his majesty and his glory. And you will not want to leave his presence because you will realize that in his presence is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Well, Jesus took Peter, James, and John up into the mountain. Uh, Peter, James, and John had their issues, their weaknesses, and their vulnerabilities. But Jesus chose them. Uh, Peter was impulsive, compulsive, and imperious. James and John were known as the sons of thunder. They were erratic, irregular, unstable, unsettled, inconsistent, improper, unpredictable, and inappropriate. But Jesus chose them. Uh, let me just speak this in your spirit right here, that in spite of your problems, your propensities, and your proclivities, Jesus chose you. And your existence here today is God's plan. It is God who called you and selected you and sent you into a horrible and hostile world just to make a difference. And no matter what others may or may not say about you, God brought you here. You're not an accident. You're not an afterthought. You're not a biological incidental. You're not irredeemable or irreconcilable. God wanted you, and that's why you are here. You were divinely designed and cosmically created. And every move you make, God is tracking the trajectory of your journey every day because God wants to take you high and give you a marvelous mountaintop experience. Well, picture, if you will, that beautiful evening when the brilliance of the golden sun lingered along the rugged mountainside of what most scholars believe was Mount Tiabor. And as soon as the night had put on its garment of blackness, the solitary travelers were draped in the darkness of the historic and legendary evening. Peter, James, and John did not bother to ask Jesus where he was going. They just followed. Can you just follow? Even when Jesus takes you along the rough side of the mountain. Can you just sing, I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain and I'm doing my best to make it in. Can you sing, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground? So as they ascended the mountain, Jesus asked them to pause for a minute. And the pen of inspiration lets us know that Jesus, the man of sorrow and of woe, poured out his soul to his father and asked for strength to face the puzzling, perilous, and perplexing days ahead. Jesus prayed, and his heavenly Father heard his prayer. I'm so glad that we serve a prayer-hearing, prayer-answering God. I'm so glad that we serve an almighty, all-merciful, all-marvelous, all-miraculous all-loving God, hallelujah. 
steps while he prostrated himself upon the ground, suddenly the golden gates of the celestial city were thrown wide open and a holy radiance descended upon them. Divinity flashed through humanity and mingled with the glory that was coming from above. And as Christ rose from his prostrated position, he stood in godlike majesty, clothed in beauty and in glory. Then suddenly the agony of his soul was lifted and his countenance now shines as the sun and his garments are as white as light. The disciples, they awoke and they saw the floodlight of glory illuminating the mountain and its surrounding and they found themselves in the midst of what Bible scholars call a theophany. He, they looked up, but they saw Jesus, but they realized that Jesus was not standing alone. For beside him were two heavenly visitors. There was Moses and there was Elijah. Moses, the great lawgiver, and Elijah, the greatest prophet that ever lived. Moses, who represented those who will be raised from the dead at the second coming of the Lord. And Elijah, who represents those who will not be consumed by death's power, but will be caught up into the year. Moses and Elijah. Moses, who talked with God face to face on Mount Sinai and saw the glory and the majesty of God. And he saw Elijah who called down fire from heaven to consume the sacrifices of the Lord and destroy the prophets of Baal. They saw Moses and Elijah. Moses who delivered the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage. And Elijah who, whose prayer opened up the floodgates of heaven where it had not rained for three and a half years. Years, Moses, whom angels carried and transported him into the portals of glory, and Elijah, who was carried up in a fiery chariot to glory. They saw Moses and Elijah. Well, William Bartley, New Testament scholar, lets us know that these two men were the twin tower of Israel's religious history and heritage. It is as if the greatest religious heroes in Israel's history came to visit Jesus as he was setting out on the last and greatest assignment of redeeming the world from the tyranny of sin. They came to encourage him. They came to say, go on, go on. They knew that he was the one that the world longed for. They knew that he was the one of which the Old Testament Isaiah prophesied that the government would be upon his shoulders, but his name would be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So they came to cheer him on in his adventurous exodus from Jerusalem to Calvary. But above all, they heard a voice from heaven declaring, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. My brothers and sisters, there are some vital lessons that we must learn from this passage. Because this passage is tailored to teach us that if you get closer to Jesus, if you get closer to Jesus in your walk and in your talk, in your relationship and in your fellowship, in your dreams and your aspirations, your plans and your projections, if you get closer to Jesus, talk somebody, tell somebody, get closer to Jesus. Get closer to Jesus. For if you get closer to Jesus, 
He will elevate you, liberate you, emancipate you, vindicate you, dedicate and consecrate you. If you get closer to Jesus, he will raise you, uplift you, upgrade you, promote you, increase you, strengthen you, and give you a mountaintop experience. Get closer to Jesus. That mountaintop experience will last forever so that you will be so high that the devil can't reach you, harm you, nor hurt you. Let, let, let me illustrate it this way. Let me illustrate it this way. I'm afraid of snakes. I'm afraid of snakes. Even if they are caged in, I'm still afraid. I'm afraid of snakes. But I read that there is an invisible line above which snakes cannot go. It is called the snake line. That there is a certain altitude where snakes do not and cannot go because snakes are elongated, legless, carnivorous reptiles of the suborder serpents. So snakes cannot breathe above the level of 6,000 feet. They can only survive on a low plane. They are cold-blooded animals and cannot breathe above the snake line. So if you stay above the snake line and keep out of the danger of the snake, it will not be able to spew its venom on you. But if you are below the snake line, you may fall victim Victim to his deadly venom. All I'm trying to let somebody know is that when you live on a high plane, when you allow God to lift you and inspire you and empower you and enlighten you, the enemy cannot reach you, cannot touch you, cannot mess with you because you live above the snake line. See, see, the enemy will try to spew his venom at you, but you don't have to be a captive of his scheme or a victim of his viciousness because you live above the snake line. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 and verse 19, Behold, I will give you power. I will give you power. To tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt or harm you. Hallelujah. Here Isaiah saying, oh no weapon. No weapon. No weapon that's formed against you will prosper. What a mighty God we serve. Live above the snake line. Tell somebody, tell somebody, let's live above the snake line. Hallelujah. And so this brings me to my second lesson from this passage. My second lesson from this passage is that God will always make special arrangements to send a word of encouragement when you have to deal with and face life's puzzling and problematic predicament. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Watch this. Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the Redeemer of the world. Jesus, as he headed towards the cross, Jesus needed encouragement. And if Jesus needed encouragement, how much more we puny, frail, and fragile human beings. Tell somebody, tell somebody, you will need some encouragement. But I have news for you because God will send some encouragement. 
And God sends encouragement in various ways. He may not send Moses or Elijah, but he will sure send somebody. I know my brothers and sisters that if you hang on to God and you just know that weeping only endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning, hallelujah, you're going to get your blessing. You're going to get your blessing. I've had some situations where I was so discouraged. I could have lost my mind, gone crazy, deranged, mental, imbecile, decapitated, kicked the cat and shot the dog. But the only reason I'm here is because God sent me encouragement. Oh, hallelujah. God is a good God. And sometimes the encouragement may not be pleasant. But just know that all things, I say all things, work together for good to them that love the Lord. All things. Stories told of a man who was the only survivor, the only one left alive after the sh his ship wrecked, was wrecked on a small island. He prayed every day, and he asked God to send somebody to rescue him. And every day he looked around for help, but he couldn't find help. He was tired of waiting, so he made a little shelter or a little hut to protect him and to protect his few possessions. But one day after Looking for food, he came back and he found that the little shelter was on fire. He could do nothing to stop it. It burned flat to the ground. The worst thing was that everything he owned was burnt. He was confused and he was mad. He asked God, why did you do this to me, Lord? And so he cried all night and fell asleep on the sand. But early the next morning, he heard the sound of a boat coming in yonder distance, coming closer and closer to the island. They came to rescue him. So he asked them, how did you know that I was here? The rescuer said, oh, we saw the smoke. And when we saw the smoke, we knew that somebody was there. I'm here to tell somebody, hung on, even if your little shelter has burned down. Because God sees the smoke and he's going to direct somebody. He's going to send somebody to your rescue. We serve a mighty God who comes to our rescue. Psalm says... He's a very present help in times of need. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I know it's easy to get mad, but hallelujah, God has a positive answer to every negative situation. For I know the plans that I have for you, God says, plans to keep you to encourage you. Oh, God said in everything, give thanks. Hallelujah. So hallelujah, the disciples, they saw the bright light. And this brings me to my next lesson from this passage says, which says, after you have been given that elevation and witness God's visitation, hear his revelation and is energized by expectation you won't want to leave but stay in constant awe and adoration before the great God of the universe hallelujah what a mighty God we serve so Peter 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 the impetuous Peter Peter said let us build three tabernacles one for thee 
Thank you, Peter. Peter is putting God first. Oh, we got to learn how to put God first. First thing in the morning. First in our marriage. First in our business. First in everything. God must be first. Peter said, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Hey, hallelujah. Peter didn't want to leave. Peter wanted to stay in the presence of the Lord. Do you know what I, I can't understand? How, how folks can come to church and the atmosphere is just right. And the spirit is moving. And you know God is in the house. And you see the majesty and the glory of God. And some people are still not moved. So, some people can't wait for the benediction. Some people are too cute to clap. Some people are too hard to holler. Some people are too educated to get excited. Some people are too sophisticated to shout. Too busy to bless. Too puffed up to stand up and lift up their hands and say, thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You see, we got to learn how to stay in his presence. We got to learn how to give God praise. Because the word says, in thy presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Joy. I said joy. Somebody shout joy. Joy that the world can't give and the world can't take. Joy. Joy. When sickness can't defeat you and death can't destroy you. Joy. 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 Peter says, Lord, I don't want to leave your presence. We don't have food up in the mountain, but I'm going to stay up here. Lord, I'm not asking for anything. Lord, you don't have to impress me or bless me or impress me. Lord, I just want your presence. I just want your presence. The preacher may not preach my sermon. Or the choir may not sing my song. Or the deacons may not collect my offering. Or the elders may not say an encouraging word. But I'm not going to leave. I ain't going anywhere. I just want to be in the presence. As long as Jesus is here. I'm going to stay right here. Build three tabernacles. I want to stay with you, Lord. I want to love you, Lord. I want to worship you, Lord. Lord, I don't want to leave you. I'm not leaving. Sickness may come up against me. People may criticize me. But I'm not leaving. Lord, plant my feet. Plant my feet on higher ground. Plant my feet. Oh, praise the Lord. So, 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 so Peter was about to learn something. And what Peter was about to learn was that Jesus wasn't going anywhere. Oh, hallelujah. Because when all was over, when Moses and Elijah were gone, when the voice became silent, when the brightness and the glory disappeared, when the disciples left in holy awe and amazement, guess who was left with them? It was Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I just stopped by to tell somebody 
that when friends walk out on you, when relationships fail, when your husband disappear, when your mother and your father forsake you, when your children abandon you, when the doctors and the nurses are gone and you lay down in the dark hospital room, I just came by to tell you that Jesus, he ain't going anywhere. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. David said, hey, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy star, they comfort me. Hey, 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 we have a divine cosmic companion who is with us every day throughout the way God is the song says be not dismayed whatever be tied God will God will yes he will yes he will he will he will he will God will take care of you when sickness comes when poverty comes when you don't have a roof over your head, when you don't have the papers to stay in America, when, when, when President 45 is against you, God will, God will, God will, will take care of you. He will never leave you, nor forsake you. And if Jesus is all you have, then Jesus is all you need. Hey, what a loving God. What a wonderful Savior. The old folks used to sing, if he has never done anything else, he's done enough. He woke me up this morning. That's enough. Started me on my way. That's enough. Oh, he clothed me in my right mind. That's enough. He brought me a mighty long way. Oh, what a mighty God. He lift my burdens, supply my needs, fight my battles, heal my wounds, gave me a brand new start. I got Jesus. I got Jesus. Oh, I got Jesus, and that's enough, that's enough, hallelujah, that's enough, I say that's enough, if you got Jesus, you got enough, stand up and give God praise, celebrate his goodness, clap your hands, and celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Lord, it's good. It is good. It's good for us to be here. And I don't know about you, but when I got up this morning, put on my three-piece suit, put on my blue tie, and my white pocket piece, and my patented shoes, and I say I'm going to the house of the Lord, it was feeling good and when I came in and the Altino choir was singing I said Lord 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 it is good it is good is it good is it good yes it's good hallelujah bless the name of the Lord bless the name of the Lord hallelujah Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Peter must have been singing, My hallelujah belongs to you. Peter must have been singing, Lord, you deserve it. How many people know today that God deserves? Where's my praise team? I want everybody to stand. 
and let us celebrate the goodness of God. What he did for you, how he blessed you, how he brought you. When you didn't see a way that you were going to make it, but God was there with you, didn't leave you. I'm going back into the valley with you. And if you feel like you're in the valley right now, that's all right. Because God is with you. Savior, now is your time. I also want to, I want to give the opportunity for somebody to take a praise walk to the altar. You're praising God for something. God has been good to you. And you want to take a thanks walk and a praise walk. Hallelujah. Because God has been so awesome. God has blessed you when you thought that it was all over. There was God standing in the shadows, keeping watch over his own. And God, you deserve it, Lord. You deserve it. You deserve it. Come on down and take a praise walk today. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
you just come, you come and pray for us. Put your hands together and just celebrate. Celebrate God. Celebrate Him. He deserves our praise. He deserves honor and worship and adoration. He deserves it. Hallelujah. We praise the name. Lord, your children have left their seats. They have come down front. This is a walk of faith. Honor their faith, we pray. They lift their hearts to you in gratitude today, Lord, for something special you have done for them. We didn't expect it, Lord, but you came through. Lord, you will do it again and again and again. Thank you, Lord, for the kind of God you are. You bless us. All you want for us is life and life evermore. Death and fire was never for your children. But one day, Lord, you are going to put an end to it. So we thank you, Lord, for the kind of God you are. Thank you, precious Lord. Bless your children abundantly today. In the name of Jesus, I pray. 